talk about that. I'm going to talk very briefly about uh, the main areas of interest really within our stem cell biology group at the University of Bristol. Um, so I work together with Professor Anthony Hollander and Dr. Wal Kafina, and our main areas of interest are to use um, stem cells, either embryonic stem cells or adult bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells, to generate new cartilage using a tissue engineering approach with a long-term aim of being able to treat um, elderly patients who have osteoarthritis. Um, but because of the work uh, using stem cells and generating chondrocytes in cartilage, we then became involved uh, in the uh, development of this um, engineered uh, airway. Okay, so I'll start by with a very brief introduction to cartilage. So, cartilage is the white, shiny material that's found on the ends of the bones within normal articulating joints, such as the knee joint and the hip joint. But cartilage can also be found in other tissues in the body. So, in the airway, so the trachea and the bronchi, uh, it's also in the nasal septum, in the ear, the cartilage between the ribs, and uh, various other tissues. Now, cartilage has quite a, a simple structure in that it consists of only one particular type of cell, which is the chondrocyte. And the chondrocyte is responsible for producing and maintaining the vast extracellular matrix in which it sits. So the matrix consists of two major components. You have the long fibrillar structures, uh, which is type 2 collagen, and this gives cartilage its strength. And then you have these brush-like structures, which are agrofine molecules. And they absorb water and allow cartilage to act a bit like a sponge and carry out its uh, shock absorbing capabilities. So as you've already heard, um, cartilage is both an avascular and an aneural tissue. And because of this, if you get damage to your cartilage, it's not able to heal itself. So if you get damage to the cartilage in your knee joint or your hip joint, the cartilage becomes eroded away and the uh, underlying subchondral bone is exposed. The bones in the joint can rub together, and that's what leads to the pain uh, that you see in osteoarthritis. Uh, you can also see damage to cartilage in other diseases as well, and uh, this is when I'll come on to talk about the airway disease. So, the main area of work that we're doing is to uh, see if it's possible to treat um, elderly patients such as these who have severe osteoarthritis. And you can see they've lost the majority of the cartilage from the surfaces of their bones, and when this happens, the only real treatment option available is to have a joint replacement. So we want to know if it's possible to engineer new cartilage using a tissue engineering approach, which we can use to resurface joints such as these, and therefore delay or perhaps even prevent the need for a subsequent joint replacement. So there are a number of um, cell-based tissue engineering therapies that are currently used in the clinic. And these follow a basic tissue engineering approach. So they involve taking a small biopsy of cartilage from a, a low weight bearing site, this time in the knee joint. The chondrocytes, the cartilage cells, are isolated from that biopsy and they're expanded in number by growing them in monolayer culture. Once we have enough cells, they can be seeded onto a biodegradable scaffold and then grown for a further time in the lab so that the cells begin to lay down a new cartilage matrix. At this point, the new tissue can be implanted back into the joint to uh, repair the damaged area. Now, these kind of therapies um, are only really successful in younger patients, uh, those who have had sporting injuries and uh, more traumatic injuries. If we try and use these kind of therapies for treating older patients, which is the typical population who have osteoarthritis, it becomes much more difficult due to cellular senescence the inability to grow a sufficient number of chondrocytes during this, this part of the tissue engineering procedure. So this led us to ask the question as to whether it would be possible to use um, adult stem cells from the bone marrow of patients with osteoarthritis to see whether we could use those to generate a new three-dimensional cartilage. So the aim would be to, or the principle would be to take um, a bone marrow aspirate uh, from the iliac crest uh, to then isolate the mesenchymal stem cells and drive them down the chondrogenic lineage uh, using specific growth factors and then eventually to produce a new three-dimensional cartilage tissue. So what our group has shown over the last few years is that it is indeed possible to engineer cartilage from bone marrow stem cells taken from patients with osteoarthritis, uh, but in order to do this we have to give the cells a number of specific signals um, so the first thing to do is to <coughs> isolate the mesenchymal stem cells from the bone marrow sample. 
Uh, this is done simply by uh, the, the ability of the mesenchymal stem cells to attach to tissue culture plastic. We then proliferate the cells in the presence of basic fibroblast growth factor to increase the number of stem cells that we have. And then uh, we seed them onto a biodegradable scaffold, in this case polyglycolic acid, which we coat with fibronectin to help the cells to stick. At this point we need to promote differentiation of the stem cells down the chondrogenic lineage. And this we do using TGF-3, dexamethasone, and then ascorbate and insulin um, also promote extracellular matrix synthesis. So by the end of this 35 day uh, period, we've been able to generate a new uh, three dimensional carpage tissue from bone marrow stem cells from osteoarthritic patients. So at the moment we're continuing this work and also trying to optimize the best possible stem cells um, for producing the best quality of cartilage that we can to hopefully treat patients in the future uh, with osteoarthritis. So because um, of our expertise in using stem cells and generating chondrocytes, um, we became involved in the first clinical transplantation of a tissue engineered airway. And this is work which received uh, worldwide media attention at the end of last year and was published in The Lancet. So I'll start by giving a brief uh, background on airways disease. So the loss of a normal airway is devastating and there's no effective treatment methods for large defects. So if you just have a small defect uh, within the airway, it can be simply cut out um, and the two healthy ends join back together. But if the defect becomes too large, this becomes physically impossible to reconnect the healthy ends. So it would be technically feasible to carry out an um, airway transplantation in the same way as you carried out any other organ transplant. But as with all organ transplants, this would require the uh, recipient to have heavy immunosuppression for the rest of their life. These drugs are very toxic and they leave the patient prone to infections, so it's clearly not ideal. So therefore, we wondered if it would be possible to use a tissue engineering approach um, to develop a new airway substitute and to use the patient's own cells because therefore it would be immunotolerant and not be rejected by the patient's body. So our group, together with um, several other groups from all across Europe, uh, became involved in generating this new tissue engineered airway and we used it to replace an irreversibly diseased left main bronchus in a 31 year old female patient. So this is the patient, uh, Claudia Castillo. Um, she is a Colombian lady and while she was living in Colombia back in 2005, she developed airways tuberculosis. And unfortunately, while she was living in Colombia, she was misdiagnosed. Uh, she didn't get any of the correct treatments. It got progressively worse. And it was only when she moved to Barcelona in Spain last year that she eventually got uh, correctly diagnosed. But by that point, uh, subsequent treatment with medication and surgery all proved to be unsuccessful. So by the beginning of last year, her only real uh, um, option for a cure was to have her entire left lung removed and the connecting uh, left bronchus. So you can see here uh, clearly the damaged uh, portion of the left bronchus. Uh, and here we have a bronchoscopy um, showing on the left hand side the damaged uh, region. So you can clearly see the uh, dramatically reduced diameter compared to the right hand side um, and airflow to the left lung was uh, almost abolished. So in order to go about generating a new tissue engineered airway we had to go through a number of different steps and each of these steps involved different teams from all across Europe. So the first step uh, was to obtain a donor trachea. So in March of last year, a human donor trachea was obtained. Uh, this work was done in Padua, in Italy. Um, and the donor trachea was obtained from a deceased organ donor. And if that was to be simply transplanted into Claudia's body, um, she would have rejected it. So the first thing that had to be done was that all traces of the donor cells had to be removed. And this was done using a mixture of detergents and enzymes. And after each cycle of treatment, um, histological sections were taken to examine whether the donor cells had been successfully removed. And it was found that um, a total of 25 cycles of treatment over a period of about six weeks uh, was actually needed to further remove all of the cellular elements. 
So this is H&E staining after 20